Why, hello. This episode of the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project is brought to you by Heineken, makers of beer. With all the stresses of life, it can be easy to lose perspective on what really matters, but Heineken, makers of beer, believes that life is about being with friends and opening yourself to new experiences because when you live spontaneously and embrace the unexpected, it's a chance to create new stories and connections. You just have to be open to it. None of that, by the way, is scripted. That is just me speaking from my heart. <laughs> so look, enjoy a refreshingly cold, full-bodied Heineken lager today. Again, that is not in the script. That is just me describing a beer the way I feel a beer ought to be described. A refreshingly cold, full-bodied Heineken lager. Enjoy one today with its deep golden color, light fruity aroma, mild bitter taste, and a crisp, clean finish. Ah, oh, that's the perfect description of delicious beer. Cheers! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project. Here are your hosts, Matt Gorley and Andy Daly. Hello and welcome again to the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project. Done. Beautiful. I'm back. Right. You're back. <laughs> back better than never. Uh, this is a this is a delightful episode that we have for you today. Cultural. It is. Yes, it's cultural, and you know what? It's it's highly interactive. It reminds me a bit of in season one of this podcast we had a a, a pilot called Get Fit mm. Now with uh, Bill Carter. Uh, who was a trainer, a personal trainer, and the idea was that you put this on while exercising and it talks you through an exercise. And this is a bit like that. You're meant to listen to this while touring through the streets of Edinburgh, Scotland. It's brilliant because it combines uh, the podcasting medium with the travel guidebooks of yesteryear that people don't tend to use anymore because they've got it on their phones. But right. this is a way to get immersed in it. And then there's an added level on top of that. Yes, this is right. Oh, yes. Well, this is a bit like, you know, a self-guided tour in a museum kind of thing. You're going right. to you're going to take yourself on a walking tour of the beautiful historic city of Edinburgh. And uh, you're going to listen to this along the way. And I mean, you are going to be scared out of your skin. Oh. It's, it's a ghost tour. And uh, you're going to meet some ghosts. And it's, man, scary. How they were able to record otherworldly ghosts, whether that's real or not, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I was impressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is another... We're bringing you outliers in the podcasting industry, people thinking outside of the box. And yep. this is another one. People don't just sit there and chat all the time. Exactly. So this is a guy who uh, has been doing ghost tours live on the streets of Edinburgh for, for many years. And uh, and so he's bringing it into the podcasting medium. Uh, and it's in, apparently in association with the Scottish Board of Tourism or something like that. I'm, I'm almost certain it is. And in an official capacity, irrefutably so, don't even bother checking. Don't check it out. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, one interesting thing about this is... is, is the variations, subtle variations in the Scottish accent that are on display here, you know, it's obvious like block by block in the city of Edinburgh, this accent can be dramatically different. It's true. And now when you look at the United States of America, it's huge geographically. So it's understandable why a Southern California regional dialect is very different than Texas and Boston because they're so far apart. Of course. In Scotland, I don't know if you know this, mm -hmm. but there are actual demarcations block by block where if you walk over that line, you're getting a different regional dialect. And that's another reason why this is such an interesting just anthropological study here. Yes. That you will get to hear a lot of these different Scottish accents in their authenticity and diversity. Yes, and these are accents that you have, I promise you, you have never heard before. This specific uh, kind of Scottish accent. You can't, you can't, you're not, this is, I think it's five different completely distinct Scottish accents that have never quite been heard before. I like the connection with the Scottish Board of Tourism. These accents are uh, official mm -hmm. and irrefutably uh, accurate. Yeah. Don't even bother checking. The, this is real Scottish cultural anthropology here. Of course it is. Yeah. Uh, so glad to have gotten that out of the way. <laughs> so and if we, if can... we seem a bit defensive, 
it's because <laughs> it's just so rich. We don't want people to think it's fake. Right. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it's, it's, there's nothing fake about it. And uh, and if you happen to be in the city of Edinburgh listening to this, I mean, that's probably the best way to do it, but not necessary, I don't think. Well, it is important to mention these yeah. are all real places and oh, yes. they are, no joke, um, plotted out so that you can go in order to these places and actually, in fact, it's recommended that yeah. if, if possible, go on this tour. These places really exist. If you don't believe us, Google them. Yep. This is an actual walkable tour of Edinburgh. I think it's about a mile and a half of walking altogether and uh, l- walking and listening. That is one thing you are allowed to verify. Don't verify right. whether this is connected with the Scottish Board of Tourism don't or the authenticity of the accents. Please but no. this thing you should look up and Google and in fact, try to do. Try to do it. Get yourself there. It's a beautiful city. You'll enjoy it. Okay. Well, I think that's all we need to say. Uh, And please uh, listen to and enjoy Terrifying Edinburgh with Cameron McGonagall. Ooh, that's some nice spooky music, isn't it? And it should be spooky, too. This is a very, very scary podcast you're listening to. Here's the deal. My name is Cameron McGonagall, and I live in Edinburgh, Scotland, and every summer during the tourist season, I run ghost tours of Edinburgh's most haunted places. And everybody knows that Edinburgh is the most haunted city in the whole world. I mean, it's number one, right? Right behind, like, maybe, like, London and New Orleans and maybe, like, Um, Salem, Massachusetts, where they burned all the witches. And of course, the ocean is very haunted where all the people that have died at sea. But that's not a city, is it? Edinburgh is a very, very haunted city. That's the point. So here's the situation. Now, the Scottish Board of Tourism had a great idea. They said to me, why don't you do a podcast where you guide people on an audio tour of the spookiest places in Edinburgh and so people will come to Edinburgh and they'll put in the podcast and they'll walk around to all of these haunted places. I said, that's great. That's a great idea. And I'm doing it now. So, and this is, but listen, this is very important. There's no point in listening to this podcast if you're not in Edinburgh. Don't listen to it if you're not in Edinburgh. But what you should do is get yourself a plane ticket and come to Edinburgh. Okay. So you do that and then you start the podcast once you've come to Edinburgh. Not just to Edinburgh. Please get yourself to the statue of Greyfriars Bobby, right by the Greyfriars Kirkyard, and that's where we're going to start the tour. All right, so I'll see you if you buy a plane ticket and you get yourself there. All right, great. Oh, look at you. You've gone and done it, haven't you? Look at you. You've gone and got yourself to Edinburgh. Good for you. That's great. Well, have you tried the fish and chips already? (laughs) Of course you have. Of course you have. You probably did that at the airport. It's great, isn't it? Well, you must be standing by the statue of Grey Friars Bobby, the sonsy wee bit dog who was so loyal to his owner, he wouldn't leave his side even though they'd buried him in the kirkyard. It's a beautiful, inspiring story of loyalty. But listen, don't rub the dog's nose. Everyone does it, and it's terrible because you're rubbing off the paint. All right. Well, we're going to get started. This is where all stores of Edinburgh start. But you know what I should have said, and I didn't say before, there's no point doing it in the daytime because obviously nighttime is so much spookier than the daytime. So if it's daytime, then turn off the podcast, come back at night. You might do a tour of Arthur's Seat. You climb up there. It's a beautiful place to see the sunset. So do that first and then we'll start it again. I should have said, I'm sorry, I didn't say. We'll start it again at sunset after sunset. All right then. Oh, look at you. You've gone and done it, haven't you? You've waited until night time. And now it's spooky, isn't it? It's so spooky here. It's a lot scarier, right? With the moon peeking through the clouds and all that. All right, then. I'd say we're ready to start. It's nice and spooky. All right. Our first stop is the Hotel du Vin, and that's very close by. It's just a short hop up. You're going to walk past the museum, the National Museum of Scotland. It's right there, and you're going to go up to Bristol Place. It's like the first place you're going to see. The Hotel du Vin is a beautiful old hotel, but before it was a hotel, it was a private home for many years, and people say that it is very, very haunted by a spirit. And let's meet that spirit. Are you at the Hotel du Vin? Okay, you're ready to meet the spirit that haunts it. Hello, spirit. 
Hello, Cameron. It's nice to see you again today. Oh, yes, that's right. We've seen one another many times because I do these chores all the time. I have many experiences with this spirit. Do you know I've been waiting? You've been waiting here yeah, for all me? All morning I've been waiting. Well, no, it's night. It's night, that's yeah, I'm right. Yeah, but I'm a wee tight bit tired. Are you Except tired? Not, you know, it's like as a ghost, you don't, you don't sleep in the way that a regular creature sleeps. Do you go sleep at all? Well, this is part of my story. I, I was Let's never... hear your story, how you died, and the manner in which you haunt this place. Well, in some, in some places, I've been known as the thirsty ghost. Because I was just so thirsty, and I died of thirst. I, I mean, you're selling yourself a bit short, because I've heard you refer to it as the thirstiest ghost ever. Oh, the that's awful, kind, ghost that that awful kind of you, Cameron, to call me the thirstiest well, ghost ever Well, it's terrifying, isn't it? It's extra spooky to think of a ghost that's thirsty and needs a drink. It's <laughs> terrifying, isn't it? Well, it's terrifying to the, to the person who's thirsty. That's right. But it's even scarier. I was working in a private house as um, a scullery maid. A scullery That's maid. That's what they called Down it at the, the time. Scullery, right? And so, you know, I was cleaning boots and... Uh, cleaning what? Boots. You were cleaning the boots? I was cleaning... Cleaning so boots. people would come in and in those days, I'd right? I have to clean out the coal in the, in the fireplace as well. Right. But in those days, the streets were all muddy streets, weren't they? And people would come in and their boots would be covered in mud. Well, that's why it was such a hard job. And you had to clean the boots. And you needed water to clean off the boots. All right, all right. But that when, sets the but scene. When you had a thirst, they wouldn't let the, the people I worked for was so cruel. They wouldn't let me drink any of the water. It was only for the boots. They and said, so, this is boot water. Clean my fucking boots with this water. If you're so thirsty, we were, you should have been a boot. That's right. That's exactly right. And we were going on six weeks of me cleaning boots in the basement. In the, six down weeks in the and cellar, you can't in have a cellar. drink. And I kept I said, could I just get a wee bit of water, do you think? That's a long time to go without a drink. Just a drink. wee bit of And they'd say, easy, lass. Keep to the boots. You'll be licking them yourselves. And I thought, oh, Cruel. I couldn't possibly... But I thought maybe I would I would lick a boot because at least there'd be a bit of moisture on the boot. And no one would judge you for that and they, after six weeks without a drink. And what so were there these I people? Was. What did they do? And I finally said, I'm going for it. Oh, yeah. I'm going for it. I'm going to go for the bucket full of water. I don't care what's in that. So that's it. You're so I You've said, been told that's again it. And again. Don't I'm going to taste bucket. free. I don't, I'm going to do what I need, what my body's telling me I need, which is Absolutely. To, to have some moisture in Absolutely. Because the body's... A lot of water. The human body, a lot of people don't know this, but it requires water. It's like the ocean it needs water. That's right. Yeah. Just as the ocean needs water, so does the human body. <laughs> oh, you're right. So there I was across the room and I said, I'm, I'm going for it. I can Aye. see it. I could taste that bucket Aye. across the room and Aye. I thought of to myself, no one's looking. I'm just a wee lass. That's what they call me lass. Never knew my name. Just lass. They never knew your name. Never oh, gave me one. Me born, born into poverty. Oh. And I said, that's it, last you'll serve from the moment you're born to the moment you die. That's the saddest story I've ever it was, heard. It was the only life I knew, so I didn't mind it. All right. But I'm sad by it. <laughs> I'm allowed to be sad. Was anyway, it, you're does seeing... Does it sound sad to you? To me, it sounds sad that you've learned your name. It never, it's terrible. It, never, it didn't occur to and me. all this time But later, it was sad that I never even sad. left this house till today. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, Cameron, You've I'm never hoping, left this house. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Yeah, you can come with me when we go on. <gasps> anyway. It's the second taste of freedom today. It, 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 and so anyway, I said, I'm going for it, I'm going for it, I'm going for it, I'm going for it, I'm going for it. Worked myself up to a real right lather right. before I went across to the room, and there I was, and I was inches from the bucket. And somebody brought a coach iron down on my head. A coach iron? Yeah, what's that? An iron they use exclusively for the coach to beat the horses with. Oh. At least that's what I called it. Right. I don't know what it's, it's really an iron called. to hit a horse with. And so they brought it down and they smashed my skull and my lips were on the bucket. So wow. close to getting a drink of so water. It was the equivalent of if you'd put your head on like a curb and somebody smashed you in the back of the head with something. Except it was oh, a we're bucket. we're all familiar in with my, curbing. My, oh, you know what a curb is? I do. 
So they it was there, you know, like where they put the bodies in the street, right? But between the street and the sidewalk, where you put a body when you don't need gutter. it no more. That's right. That's right. That's where Just they would like put a dead that. body in your day. And I had my mouth on the bucket, and they split my whole jaw open. But when you're a ghost, it goes right back. It doesn't doesn't matter. That's right. And you're fine. So man. now what I do is I ho- I hunt the hotel, and that's how they killed you there. You that's were right. Dead. Just remove my that whole jaw from my head, and so and now then, you haunt the. Premises. So I'm the thirsty ghost. So I whenever they have like a cistern of water in the lo- in the lobby of the hotel divan, uh-huh. you'll go around. You'll sit checking in a guest or whatever they're doing at the right, front desk. Right. They have a complimentary. They call it a spa water. Right. So it has like a cucumber, they put cucumber, right. they put, cucumber, right. cucumber, right. like they put um, if it's oh, the right aye, season, nice. they put a citrus in there as well. If it's a citrus season. That's right. That's nice. And it's just delicious. Sometimes they put an apple in, in, the, in the fall to make it feel all, all apple-y. Right, but for you... A thirsty ghost. That's right. I it's can't resist. Not, can't I can't resist. <laughs> so I've been, I've been hunting the the check-in desk of the hotel divan, and when they turn their heads, they hear a glug 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 glug, and then I just empty it. I empty you the empty spa the water, water right there. Is that right down right? we go it. So over the years here at the hotel divan, there've been mysterious emptyings of water pitchers. Do turn, your, the back. Work of you. Do turn last, your back. Don't turn your back. Do turn your back. Lasses right last there. Last the ghost of the hotel divan, the thirstiest that, ghost who ever was. That's me. What a terrifying story that is. Well, thank you for letting me share it. Aye. Well, now we're going to move on to the tour. Would you like to join us and come I along? Love you can meet to. some other ghosts. I'd love to know what's going on down here. Aye. I haven't been on this street out of this house, out of this hotel since, do you know, maybe 1837. Is that the year that's, you died? That's, I think, but I never could count. It's a long time ago. Yeah. Well, all right, we just hop on out to Bristol Place. All right, you there on the tour, follow along. This is an easy hop down the street, and we're oh, going to look take. Look at that. What you what's that then? What is that? Yellow line down the middle of the street. What's that for? Oh, that's to tell the motorists, like, this way is this way and that way is that that's way. That's something. Kinda... Look at that. That's right. It says you can't cross that line. Ah, that's, that's all. Something else. There's going to be a lot of things. If you haven't been out since 1837, there's going to be a lot of things you'll be surprised well, by. But I'm that's looking one... forward to petting all the horses. No, you know, no. I always did love the horses. You can't pet no horses. Oh. They're there and they're not. We're getting around in motor cars now. Anyway. <laughs> Next stop, you're going to take a quick left-hand turn on South College Street and we're headed to the Brew Lab Coffee Cafe, mm. which is a relatively new place, <laughs> but they've got a ghost in there. And by the way, it's a great place to grab a cup of coffee. A lot of people have said, Cameron, is this only on your tour because you've got a deal with the coffee shop? No. But anyway, you might grab a cup of coffee here. Is there a discount, Cameron? There's a discount for the tour. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, <laughs> the Brew Lab Coffee Cafe is said to be haunted by a spirit, and we'll meet that spirit now. Hello, spirit, are you here? Boo! <laughs> what a terrifying Boo. sound! That sends a shiver up the spine, doesn't it? It's awful, isn't it? Boo! Are you wearing Tom's? Boo! <laughs> These are, that's right, I am wearing... Tom's shoes, yeah. Well, it's a one-for-one oh. one thing. They, they'll send a shoe to Africa. I think it's in. I think they'll send two if hey. I buy two. Gosh, I'd love a pair of shoes. You would, wouldn't you? That'd Scullery me didn't get to wear Never shoes. Never did have a pair of shoes. Spirit of the Brew Lab. I've brought along the spirit of the Hotel Duven, which it just goes by Lass. We've come along to meet you. Hey, Lass. Uh, you guys. Okay, literally, this place is so sick. Hold on. Have you had anything to drink here yet? But yeah, I've had an Americano here a few oh, times. Oh, so and a good. Latte. So it's different good, right? than an American Americano. They're like, literally, don't let them try to <laughs> tell you it's the same thing. <laughs> it's really great coffee spirit. Yeah. yeah. It's good, yeah. Spirit! <laughs> How did you die here? What's your oh story? God. You're terrifying. It's so messed up. Because, like, okay, first of all, it shouldn't have happened. Wh- what should have happened? Me dying. It shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened. I was, first of all, I'm too young. Yeah. Shouldn't How old happened. were you when you died? 19. That's so young. It's tragic, isn't yeah, it? Know, it's the it's saddest really story I've ever heard. Same. And how long ago was it? It was just, like, the other day. <laughs> 
just the other day. Oh, yeah. So it's not been that long. No, I'm like figuring it out and it's fine. But I mean, look, okay, literally. So, okay, I was dating this guy. You can actually see him back there, Jeremy. He's restocking the beans. He works here. Yeah, that's my ex. <laughs> so the guy who's restocking the beans, those of you who are on the audio tour right now, take a look for the guy who's restocking the beans at the brew lab. <gasps> that is the ex-boyfriend of the ghost of the brew lab. Yeah, he has, if you want to see him, he's got a blonde ponytail um, that's braided into three braids. Three braids? Oh, the one with the three braids. I thought he was a brave heart warrior. Yeah, he wants you to think that. That's his thing. It worked on me for a while. <laughs> and let me just tell you, <laughs> that's, not all, that's not what it's cracked up to be. Okay. <laughs> so, like, anyways, he sucks. Um, but, yeah, I fell, and I tripped coming down those little stairs, and I tripped into the corner of that cappuccino uh, machine. Right. So, wait a minute. Just back up a bit. You're not a Scot, right? No. Oh, my God. Thank you. <laughs> You're from the state. Are you from the States? Yeah. But do I sound? Because I was, like, living here a little. Do I sound like I'm from here? Because they say you get a bit of an accent. Nobody really sounds like they're from Scotland. No, it's not. Well... Not 100%. It's impossible. And like, you can only sound like you're from Scotland for a few words at a time. That's what yeah. I found. That's right. Well, I only know the people in my house. So I just thought that's how, how people were in that house. That's right. So I yeah. would have believed anything. Well, I'm but really you're, flattered. But you, so you're from the States and you're, what were you visiting here? Yeah, I was studying abroad. And Jeremy, is he a Scot? What, what was it? What, what, was, the, what was this? Do you know, Brad? So I don't. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just didn't understand. Oh, that's so ironic. Um, I was studying abroad. Oh. We're just steps away from the campus of the Edinburgh University, oh, yeah. right? Oh, right. The and uni. Were, were you working here, or were you just having a cup of coffee? Um, I seen your boyfriend. I come in here and do homework, and I'm writing a screenplay. Nice. But not any money more because I can't log on because my fingers don't work on the computer anymore because I'm dead. Isn't that a shame? Oh, that's so that's sad, the new so. saddest story that's I've ever heard in my sad. life. That a ghost can't can't make any progress on a screenplay at all because the fingers won't depress the keys on the keyboard. It was really so good. sad. Because you would think, right, that to be a ghost now you've got all the time in the world to work on those projects that are hard to get to. That's what I was kind of excited about when I died because like there's so much that I don't finish because I'm kind of ADD. So, like, I was kind of like, I'll get all this stuff done. It'll be really good. And then I can't even, like, open the computer, let alone type. Right. That's so tragic. But that's Terrible. sad. Yeah. It's so I fell on those stairs and I impaled my eye on that <gasps> cappuccino machine. You did. And then I pulled on it because I didn't know if it was really out or not. And then it pulled out completely. <laughs> and then my brain started coming out. And then I kept pulling it like a clown. Oh, and so you just kept pulling brains out of your very eye socket like a clown. And did yeah. you see you were laughing? Everyone was laughing because it was so weird because they thought I was kidding. So is a brain just a noodle then? Yeah, so my brain's basically... It's just a noodle. This is like, I guess a lot of people don't know about the human body is that like right. the brain is just like a long noodle that's kind of like, like a yarn. Right. Plus. No, I think a lot of people don't know that. And it's attached to the eye, is it? Yeah, so because my eye pulled out and then like my brain was kind of sticking through the hole. And I just kept pulling. And it was so everyone was cracking up. I got, and I got like $20 in tips. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. They thought you were like a busker. Yeah. yeah. I was doing a like, well, I'll pay for that. Like act. zombie clown or something. Right. But yeah, it really, really hurt. And then my life ended because my brain stopped. And that was it. Because you can't, you can't go on without a brain. Yeah. And I didn't totally know that was what was going to happen. Right. I was kind of carried away because it was so crazy. If you had known... You'd have stopped pulling out your brain. Totally. And I keep saying that. And it's like, people are like, it's too late. But it's a bit like undoing a sweater, isn't it? It's so it's, fun. Yeah, you start, you just, it feels good, doesn't it? Just it to feels keep good to pull pulling that it. thread, doesn't it? Right, yeah. right, right. It feels yeah. a bit mischievous. So now you're a ghost and you yeah. can't leave the Brew Lab Cafe, is that right? <laughs> you're can. condemned to walk here for eternity. Or as far as you know, it's only been like a couple of days. Yeah, so I guess you're breaking the news to me or something? I don't know. I mean, if you're a ghost, usually, right? I mean, you can confirm. The way it works is that you're condemned for eternity to walk among, oh, to walk around. I, 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 I mean, you've been here since 1837. I, but I thought, it was, thought it would come to an end at some point. I don't know. I mean, maybe if you've got some work that you've got to do. God, I I mean, I'm even happier to be outside now. That's right. So... What what is the manner of your haunting? Well, I have some like like what do you mean like how do I do it or like why? Um, 
You could do either question, but I'm curious to know, like, what can people expect when they come here to the Brew Lab and they have an interaction with the ghost of the Brew Lab Cafe? What is she going to do to you? So, like, okay, um, one of my tricks that I figured out is that I can kind of, like, um, mess with people when they're trying to do math. So, like, you'll always get the wrong change. So, <laughs> you mean you'll mess with, like, the person who's at... The barista. The, at the barista who's... I kind of just, like, start. I go in their ear and I'm like, seven, nine, fifteen, one, two. And then they <laughs> don't know what they were doing and then they... So, get that's me. your way of getting revenge at the brew lab. Yeah, and they're going to be told... Their numbers life. are going to be so off, like, in their books. Like, it's not going to make any sense. That's so. terrifying! <laughs> So every day, or really at the end of every shift, it's not just every day, when they're batching out right at the register and they're, make, they're trying to make accounts, it'll never be right. Yeah. And I, it'll be off by what? like how Anywhere much from more? like, what's the currency? <laughs> Pounds sterling? Okay, so like, yeah. Anywhere from like 10 pence to like um, 50 pounds. Well, that's a lot of money for a coffee shop. Yeah. Wow. That's, That's terrifying. That's crazy. And then sometimes I just like pop in the mirror and stuff. <laughs> so like if somebody's looking at themselves in the mirror, <laughs> yeah, the next like, thing they know, they're also wow. seeing you. Yeah. And at that point, have you got brains hanging out of your eye socket? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's terrifying, isn't it? It's awful. It's, it's not anything I've ever seen before. That's right. Well, the good thing is that right before I died, I got my hair done. Um, so it's fresh. <laughs> Die. It's very pretty. Yeah, so my, my fucking roots aren't showing. I w- that was so <laughs> great. As a woman, I wish I had died with my hair in place, but instead I always look like a bit of a ragamuffin. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, you could have said something to make her feel a, li- a bit better. I mean, it's a, it's a nice natural look, I think. You know, I well, mean, that's nice. That's kind of you, Cameron. But I you're mean, welcome. I, I'm just. A I mean, she's going to spend so, eternity like sort of this. You like, might throw a little. Compliment are you able to, to take off that bonnet? Mm, no, it sort of just like that's how it goes. Like your eyeballs never going to go back in either. Okay, so. we yeah. don't know that. It's getting. It's starting to get a bit catty here. You know, everyone <laughs> like, looks sorry. great. Let's just say that everyone <laughs> looks fine. Well, thank you. Would you like to join us on our next stop? What you What you say okay. your name was? I didn't. It's Amanda. <laughs> Amanda, the ghost of the brew lab. Can cafe. I come? Please come along. We're yeah. going on a journey to meet our third ghost, our third spirit of our ghost tour. So far, it's spooky. It's terrifying, isn't it? So from here, it's a wee little half mile walk to the next stop. You might want to hop in a bus or a cab. Or whatever, you're going to go down South Bridge to High Street on the Royal Mile and then Cannon Gate and you'll pass the Banshee Labyrinth, which is incredibly haunted. Maybe we'll talk about that in our next episode. You know, this is going to be a regular podcast. There's this no end of haunted places in Edinburgh. But for now, we're just going to walk right past the Banshee Labyrinth. You'll pass the Museum of Childhood. And I don't know if that place is haunted or not, but I do know that if you go in there without a child, they'll take a picture and send it straight to Scotland, you <laughs> You just got to know that. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with what we're up to now. But we're, So you're going to go now to the historic Toll Booth Tavern at the site of the old Toll Booth Cannon Gate where they used to collect the tolls for people entering the city in the 16th century. But it was also a courthouse and a prison. And it was here that one of Scotland's most notorious figures was executed. And it is said that his ghost is still here, Amanda and Lass. Are you terrified? <laughs> quite scary. Yeah. It's quite scary here at the Toll Booth Tavern, where, by the way, you can pop in for a pint and we've got no arrangement. But it's a great place to have a pint. <laughs> Who's here? Spirit! Hi, it's me, Sonny Bean, the terrifying cannibal of the coast. <laughs> the cannibal- I'll eat you all up. I'll eat you all up. <laughs> Sonny Bean, the cannibal of the coast? That's correct. I live in a cave over by the coast and I kidnap people (laughs) and cook them. And in the daytime, I stay very quiet and play board games. You just play board games there in the the cave? There's nothing else to do in the daytime. I try to keep it down with With the family. With your family? Yes, I have a giant family. A giant clad? Most of them the product of incest. Oh. (gasps) Oh. See, cannibalism is, I so don't like, but incest is se- disgusting. Sexy? It's just worse, isn't it? So what was, oh, if, I you said have sexy. To choo- if you have to choose. Isn't incest when sexy. two royal people get together? 
<laughs> well, there is a lot of incest well, among the royals. We're not royal, but we sure got together. <laughs> Incest is not only confined to the royals, but it's true. That's true. You can't deny that. They've done a lot of That's incest correct. in the royal family, haven't they? Well, it's the it's consolidation of power, I think. Is that what it is? Yeah. Choose between incest and cannibalism. I choose cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> you my choice you have is admit, to I, make a choice. You haven't met my brother. <laughs> no, I haven't. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, Sonny Bean, you live. When did you live? When? What year? I lived sometime in the fifteenth, sixteenth, or seventeenth century. <laughs> well, it's a long time ago. No matter which one you Quite choose, it's a bit of a while. But we can't even narrow it down any further. Well, there's a lot of contradicting accounts. Is that right? Yes, that's so correct. Your life is shrouded in mysterious mystery. In fact, some people say that the existence of Sonny Bean was merely English propaganda at the time. What we now would call fake news. <laughs> but you didn't know anything about that, Sonny Bean. Uh, of course I do. Of course you don't. I lived then, not now. Right, right, right. So, you lived on the coast in a cave. Right. Possibly invented by English to besmirch the Scots. Correct. But let's just say you lived. And how? what was the manner? How did you find people to eat? Well... Late at night, we'd sneak out of the cave and find a man riding by on horseback. Right. Or a woman. Sure. On horseback. On horseback. Or a foot. Or in a carriage. Whatever the, the particular The mode of transportation was, sounds like yes. it doesn't matter. It's, but what's important is you'd find a person. And we'd say, hello. That's right. Oh, good. And then we'd snatch them, take them back to the cave, cut them up and cook them. Or... Cook them, and then cut them up. <laughs> I think it's got to be smarter, right, to cut them up first and then cook them, just in there terms of There was like, a lot of contradictory recipes flying around for the best way to cook up human flesh. What's the most delicious way? That's a good question there, because I'm just thinking you, you would savagely rip into the flesh, but yeah, maybe what are their ways of preparing human flesh that were better Oftentimes than others? Oftentimes with spices was better. Uh-huh. Do you ever cook oh, them into wait. a pie? Damn it. <laughs> oh, no, it's all right. Don't feel bad. It's well, hard, I it's just hard wish to I make a pie. I just wish I thought that before this, you know. Oh, no. Why not throw a flaky crust around a bit of human? Well, it's difficult to make a pie in a cave. Can I ask, think? would you offer them a glass of water before you kill them? Big pardon. <laughs> this is the thirstiest ghost who has ever existed. This is the thirsty ghost of people. the Hotel du Man. Why Do you not we offer them any... Water. All She's got a particular interest water. in thirst and water. She was denied water before she was killed I and did, well, roams the earth taking revenge against humanity for that. I can only imagine how difficult that must have been. Does it taste different when someone's younger or older? Hey, they get That's a little question. gamey as they get older. Is gamey good or bad? Depends <laughs> if you like it. Mm, let's say I do. Then it's better. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd lure people back there, you cut them up and you cook them. Correct. Right. And then at some point, I suppose people found out you were doing it, didn't they, Sonny? Well, Bean? for quite some time. Aye. Some say a quarter of a century. A quarter of a century? Some say we never existed. <laughs> right. But we're dismissing them for now. All right. But for a quarter of a century, you got away with it? Hey, no one knew because it was always lonesome travels. Big pardon. <laughs> it's all right. It was always lonesome travelers in the middle of the night. Yeah. No what one was the coastline? Was that in the Heelands? Sure. All right. Yeah, it was the Heelands, the Lowlands, and sometimes in the Midlands. All right. I mean, no, I'm asking where your cave was. All right, yeah. <laughs> Heelands. <laughs> It's all right if you don't know. So then you get caught. Did you get caught? Hey, one night we came upon a man Aye. and a lady Aye. and said, would you like to come back to my place for a bit? <laughs> and that's a nice invitation. Like a threesome. Right. Something of the sort, although there were about a hundred of us at that time. Oh, wow. So it's like a hundred and twosome. <laughs> yep. Crazy. That's a lot. Anyway, the man it's pulled like... out a giant claymore and attacked us. We ran. Next thing you know, King James and a posse of 400 people are looking for us with This dogs. one guy ran off the whole Sonny Bean clan. We ate the well, lady. Good on him. Oh, you ate the lady. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy ran you off. Aye. He says, you can have me girl. But yep. 
You're not having me. His gallantry went out the window when it was on the line. I... Oh my God, guys are so like that. That's so true. No matter what century. True, true. You don't know this, but guys still do that shit. <laughs> anyway, Sonny Bean. So the English came and they captured you. They captured me. And then what They, they brought do? me here to the toll booth jail at the time. Right. Cut off me feet and hands. Aye, did and they? And me genitalia. Oh, did they? <laughs> What did you do that for? <laughs> it what, what, seems what like insult that? to injury. Right. Well, that's weird that they would do that. Well, it was a different time. <laughs> I guess so. So you were sentenced to that, were you? Correct. The judge said, we sentenced you to have your hands and your feet and your naughty bits all cut off. Not all at once. All right. It was over the course of several days he laid down that sentence. What a shame. That's terrible. The prosecutors kept appealing for harsher punishments. <laughs> well, all right. Well, you did eat people. I don't know. So then, then you were killed there, weren't you? Aye. They executed you. Aye. You might as well, right? What's the point of going on without your hands and feet and your, your others? It was very hard to continue. <laughs> right. Right. Might as well. At that point, I'd say, all right, let's be I'm done with it. Yep. Aye, all right. What was the manner of execution? They cut off my hands and feet and my jacket. <laughs> well, that was it then. That was what killed you. <laughs> and then you. you died from that. You died from Let that. Out. Oh, I see. They let you bleed to death. Sure. What a shame. And so now, here you are at the Toll Booth Tavern. Aye. And you haunt it to this day. I do. What is the manner of your haunting? I'll move drinks around. You do? <laughs> Napkins. Drinks and Sometimes napkins. Sometimes I'll switch the fork and the knife. On a table setting. Because people expect to find that fork on the they left the side of the plate. the fork on the left and the knife on the right, right hand side. I'll switch them around. People lose their fucking minds. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds absolutely fucking terrifying, doesn't it? Sometimes I'll open a closed window. Close an open window. <gasps> oh, that's good. I'm going to use that. You can't rely on windows anymore. No, you at can't. the toll booth tavern to stay open, they're closed. <laughs> Frequently you'll hear someone saying... I thought I opened this. Right! And they did! They did, and I closed it. That's fucking terrifying. I tried to get myself called the Phantom of Tollbooth. <laughs> oh. But no one. It, it didn't catch it didn't on. didn't stick. Right, yeah. No, it's hard when you try to get your own nickname going. You can't really do it, no, right? No. Somebody's got to put it on you. Right. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. But do you, you're not, Sonny Bean is a good name, though, isn't it? Well, you know, Sonny, Sonny, as it turns out, was used as a slur for the Scottish. I didn't know that. Aye, they call them Sonnies. Why, why is it a slur? Uh, you know, you ever tried to saw your knee? I've never tried to saw my knee. Exactly. All right, all right. Fine. So it's Sonny Bean, the ghost of Toll Booth Tavern. Correct. A cannibal, creepy cannibal of the coastline. Terrifying cannibal of the coastline. But you can't eat people anymore, right? Now that you're a ghost. My teeth go right through them. Oh, but you tried it, it sounds like. <laughs> Once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah, this... For old time's sake. A ghost can eat, drink a glass of water, or write a screenplay, or <gasps> eat a man. It's a sad life, uh, isn't it? Uh... Aye. All right, Sonny, would you like to join us on our next stop? I think I would. All right, we're going to take a wee break. And the next stop on our tour is just around the corner on Dummy Dykes Road. You've got to hop down uh, Sugar... What is it? I, I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> From here, you'll just hop across High Street and duck into Sugar House Close and cut across to Hollywood Road. And you'll take a left and a quick right onto Dummy Dykes Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you've done that, we'll have a word about what you're going to see next. And it will chill you to your bones. But oh. first, let's take a little break. Break. I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. I just want to break in for a moment, just a brief moment to discuss beer with you. And uh, don't you know, skip forward because what I have to say about beer will change your life. Folks, you know that life can be stressful and sometimes we lose perspective on what really matters as we rush to achieve all the things that we want in life. It can be easy to forget to enjoy the smaller moments along the way. But life isn't about following a common path or having a set plan. It's about being with friends, celebrating with loved ones, and living in the moment. And this is, again, I'd like to break in and say that absolutely none of what I'm saying right now has been scripted for me by Heineken or anyone else. This is me speaking spontaneously off the top of my head and most importantly, from my heart. 
Folks, Heineken believes that you create the richest memories when you embrace the unexpected and open yourself to new experiences. Got it? That's why Heineken encourages everyone to live spontaneously. Oh, do they? Well, you can, but that's got to be done within reason. Anyway, because when you embrace the unexpected, things like exploring new parties, enjoying the summertime, watching exciting soccer matches, for instance, or you can swap that out with the sport you're more interested in, celebrating holidays with your family, these things all become chances to create new stories and connections. Yes, I agree with that. You just have to be open to it, folks. Oh, I'm here. I'm going to talk about my personal experience with Heineken beer. If I have one, sure. I've got personal experience with Heineken beer. I always associate Heineken with Holland, where I was that one time, and they had it everywhere. And uh, that's my personal experience. Look, enjoy a refreshingly cold, full-bodied Heineken lager today with its deep golden color, light fruity aroma, mild bitter taste, taste, and a crisp, clean finish. Cheers! Oh, are you kidding me? Folks, listen. Hi, this is Andy Daly. I'm just busting in here to tell you about another podcast that uh, is here on the Earwolf Network, and it is truly one of my favorites. If you have never listened to Womp It Up here on Earwolf, or you just haven't checked it out in a while, well, now is the time. Womp It Up is where everyone's favorite comedy bang-bang intern, Marissa Wampler, who is played by Jessica St. Clair. Sorry to spoil it, but there's an actual actress playing that role. And her co-host, Charlotte Listler, played by Lennon Parham, they give listeners a front row seat to the madness of the Marina Del Rey lifestyle. Man, it gets wild down there in Marina Del Rey. And they, uh, they, they let it all hang out on that show. In every episode, Marissa and Listler interview a different colorful character from the world of the Marina Del Rey High School. Like, for instance, Joe Bongo, their health teacher, played by ha -ha, me. Uh, and they also give uh, listeners relationship advice. And believe it or not, some of it is fairly solid. Uh, their latest guest is comedian Nicole Byer. I love Nicole Byer. Maybe you know her from the Netflix show Nailed It. My children can't get enough of that show. Or maybe you know Nicole Byer from her podcast Why Won't You Date Me. My children can't get enough of that show. No, I'm kidding. My children don't listen to that. Uh, plus, your favorite characters are always dropping in. If you love comedy Bang Bang, and you do, then you're really going to love this. Why do I, I, I feel crazy having to sell somebody on Womp It Up. You haven't listened to Womp It Up? You got to listen to Womp It Up. All right, listen to Womp It Up on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Earwolf.com, or wherever you listen. It is truly one of the greats, and we are so lucky that it exists. Womp It Up. Hello, this is Andy Daly, and you're listening to the Andy Daly Podcast Pilot Project. If you can't wait to hear more episodes, you can binge listen to the entire season now on Stitcher Premium. For a free month of premium, go to stitcherpremium.com slash Andy and use promo code Andy. All right, we're back. You should have had time now to get yourself to Dummy Dykes Road. Most of the old buildings here have been torn down, but there's one left standing at 69 Dummy Dykes. Now it's a community centre, but it used to be the home of a well-known and much-beloved bagpiper to the name of Stuart Cambridge, who... I am sorry to say, went missing one night in 1853. No one knows what happened to him. But there was one very strange and terrifying clue as his wife was said to have spotted a trow in the garden that night. And since then, many have said they've seen him lurking about. Do you not know what a trow is? Well, that's all right. I can tell you. A trow is a hideous little creature from the Orkney and the Shetland Islands who sneaks into people's homes at night. They love music and have an awful habit of kidnapping musicians. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready to be scared out of your very skin as we're about to meet the Trow of Dummy Dykes Road. Hello, Trow! Uh, greetings, Earthling. Uh, <laughs> it is I. I'm not a... As you see, I'm not a Trow. I am, uh, in fact, Wait. I am an extraterrestrial traveller who is stranded on your planet. I've been trying to escape back to my own galaxy for... Uh, Several years now, so... What are you doing? What are you doing? This What's is that? not frightening. It's not frightening at all, is it? You're an uh, alien? You, this is... This I, is Cameron McGonagall's terrifying Edinburgh ghost tour. And we're, so far we've met we've met three spirits. You're the fourth spirit. Right. The I, trow of Jimmy Dykes I'm Road. I'm actually a spirit. I'm not a trow. I am an extraterrestrial alien. And uh, as what? we perhaps have discussed on the text thread, I... Uh, 
we have discussed it, and That's I made right. it very clear. This is all about. I mean, it was already the like the last. A trial is a monster and not a ghost. So I was already like, you know, the last text was from me, <laughs> and I said. <laughs> So I'm doing it, and I, I never heard back from you. When did you send Silent that text? Renders cons- let, me, let me look. When did you send it? Because I didn't get that one. And let me look at it. Oh, not delivered. Well, <laughs> here I we are. I don't even know what a text is. That's right. These spirits don't know what a text oh, is. You, you primitive you- earthlings with uh, your limited technology. So it's like extraterrestrial. Does that mean you're English? <laughs> no, no, poor pitiful earth mind. I am from a, a, a civilization far beyond your comprehension. What's your favorite candy? I like uh, <laughs> minstrels and uh, Maltesers. What about oh, Reese's I'm... Pieces? I don't know of uh, the, these uh, pieces of which you speak. Are you from I... France? No, I'm from another planet. It's called Zaltan Three. Because la- Can I just, I mean, first of all, we're probably not going to use any of this. I don't think it's going to be, I can't use it, but you, you've told me that you're not doing ghost tours anymore. You don't do them anymore, right? I do. What I happened? I don't do the ghost tours anymore. You're not doing ghost tours? And now it's all about this <sighs> crap, this UFO bullshit. What? My, <clears throat> I had, it's not crap. It's and crap! I had, of course it is, it's, it's shite. I had an experience that uh, was very uh, troubling to me and... I am trying to process it as best I can by uh, uh, channeling it into my work. What happened to you? Thank you for asking. Well, uh, my spacecraft crash landed here. Uh, we came down to study people, and uh, this uh, bagpiper that went missing, it's because... Uh, right, okay. Yes. Can we, we're, we're still talking about that guy. That's right. So All right. I'm within the so, bounds uh, of the universe You've got a here. different explanation. It doesn't involve ghosts. I did abduct but, this... Uh, but it's UFOs. Unidentified flying objects, that's correct. That's you. That's me. All right, so this is Cameron McGonagall's terrifying Edinburgh ghost <laughs> and alien tour, I guess, with one alien. It's, it's not you, what I had mind. It's can, not what I had mind. Can you not admit that an alien is pretty terrifying? Of course, sure. All right, fine. An I'm, alien a little, I'm a little ugly creature. Why don't you go ahead and describe yourself, me. yourself? Describe yourself. I am it's a, just not what was discussed, but all right. Go ahead. Oh, you really caved instantly. Well, I don't know what to, to do. Know. I mean, it's, it's, it's already here. It's already part of the thing. But all right, what do you look like? Anyway, I'm a wee little fella. <laughs> right. I got uh, <laughs> I got a great huge head uh, right. with uh, like uh, real wet looking eyes <laughs> uh, that are like, uh, uh, like as big as a cricket ball. I think he's gorgeous. Yeah, he's really cute. Yeah. What do you taste like? <laughs> what, what do I taste like? Uh, I, you know, uh, I, I find that uh, very insulting because, uh, of course, your Earth governments have been uh, trying to capture us for years and uh, dissect us just because uh, that's what we did to you. So, <laughs> Is that what you did to us? We, I, I did dissect that uh, bagpiper. I, I took him up to my spacecraft. Oh, well, all right. Now and, I'm starting uh, to get terrified, right? Okay, I get it. It's, it is scary spook, isn't it? It's correct, yes. That an alien could come and take I, a bagpiper. I ta- I, I'll take a bagpiper and I'll do experiments on him. What kind of experiments? And why a bagpiper? <laughs> did you dissect the bagpipe too, or did you get what that was? Uh, okay, I'll answer these one at a time. It's an experiment like a date. An experiment <laughs> is not like a date. An experiment is not a date, but every date is an experiment. Oh, you can take true. that to the bank. Have you ever used Snapchat because you look like something in it? Snapchat, that <laughs> Snapchat, that primitive uh, uh, phone uh, telephone oh application God, from the past. <laughs> Your culture has been through Snapchat already. <laughs> What's the next thing? <laughs> we'll, Tell us we'll get rich. We laughed at you for how long you used MySpace. Each time any of you speaks, I'm left with more questions <laughs> because I'm from so long ago. <laughs> I took the bagpiper. Right. I did uh, experiments on him. We did dental experiments. <laughs> Where we... Uh, that was we, the first step. You were most curious about his teeth. That's right. Because we don't have uh, teeth uh, uh, as you do. We have, uh, you know, sorts of bristles uh, through which we... Uh, like a brush. You know, like a brush. Uh, and we uh, process our food that way. Like through the a business. whale, maybe. A what? A whale. I'm not familiar with this creature. Oh, we don't gorgeous. know whales. No. Star Trek Four led me to believe that space aliens did know about our whales. <laughs> I guess that was wrong. Space aliens or Earth people from the future? 
Uh, I forget. I don't know what a whale is. They didn't have them during my time. You might know it as a sea monster. Oh, those. <laughs> You've seen those sea monsters out there on the coast. Oh, from sure, the, cave. the big, the big fishes. That's right, terrifying, aren't yeah. they? So now you, you, so you did some experiments on the bagpiper. <laughs> yes, we uh, we took all his teeth out and uh, we uh, like shook him in a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you didn't like that, I can tell you. This is an advanced, technologically advanced civilization. <laughs> Classic right. scientific method. We we just wanted to see what would happen, and uh, it turns out that uh, you, you Earth people, your teeth are very dear, I see. You value your teeth very highly. Is that what you learned? Was that bagpiper, he didn't want his teeth out? He didn't want his teeth out, but I made what he thanked us later because I made it easier to play the bagpipe. Did it? Then we killed him. Oh. We flayed his skin and uh, we uh, we looked at his, uh, you know, his just first uh, when he was just a bunch of muscles, uh, uh, w- you know, walking around. And then we, uh, uh, then we walking took the, around. Well, we animated him, yeah, with uh, electricity. And uh, then uh, we took all the muscle parts off and then he was just uh, like a wet red skeleton. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, Yum. <laughs> <laughs> the wet red skeleton <laughs> of a bagpiper. And that sounds good to you, Sonny uh, Bean. Sounds delicious. Did you ever do that? I love when you get down to the red part in the bones. Oh, right. Did you, you just... ever do that? Just remove the skin. Did you ever start there? Sure, you crickens. <laughs> crickens? Yeah. What's that? That's the skin. You, you fry it up in a pan. It's delicious. Human skin. It's better with spices. Oh, this is a terrifying podcast, isn't it? It really is, isn't it, when you think about eating people and electrically animating a flayed man in space? Pretty scary. That is scary, isn't it? And not only that, but pulling your brain out of your eye socket and being so thirsty. I was just going to ask, did they have water or anything to drink on your spaceship? Foolish earth creature. Uh, We have evolved past the need for water. Uh, uh, You need it every three days to survive, but uh, uh, where I come from... Oh, uh, uh, oh, here's a good one. Yes. Uh, Where I come from, water is deadly to us, so uh, we stay away from it. Oh, that's a good... But you have it, you just don't use it. We are, it's it's a deadly weapon where I come from. So then, if somebody here in Edinburgh was to find themselves on Dummy Dykes Road and was to find themselves face-to-face with... An alien such as yourself, it could pour water on him and be done with it. it. Well, that's if I were to stand still for the water pour, but uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm very quick and I'm very fast and I'd run away. <laughs> I see. <laughs> All right, so it'd be hard to throw water on you. What? Now you said throw is a different matter. You said uh, what did I pour. Say? You said pour. Oh, you're not going to stand idly by for a pour over the head. There's no one from Zoltan 3 will stand by. I have water poured on them. But an aggressive throw. An aggressive, good luck, I say to you. Is beer also dangerous to you? Just the watery part. I see. <laughs> the worse the beer, the more dangerous it is. <sighs> All right, well, ladies why, and gentlemen. Uh, why do you have to have a big sigh? Well, because it's not what we talked about. You're supposed to be a ghost. Now, we did talk about it. We talked about it. The conversation just didn't go the way you wanted that, it to go. First, they says, would you be a ghost? You says, how about a trial? And you were a trial for a while there on the tour. For a good long while. For a yeah. good long while. Yeah. And that was exciting. It was a real showstopper on the tour. People excited for the trial. And now it's an alien. Then I had an experience <laughs> that I am What was your experience? We're not going to use this part, but what was your experience? What happened to you? I... But I saw something in the sky that I could not explain. <laughs> like a UFO? If you'd like to call it that, yeah. What was it like? It was a very bright light in the sky and uh, moving in a very erratic fashion. And uh, I looked at it for a good uh, a good six minutes and uh, it was uh, going every which way, but always in a, in a tight uh, sort of uh, area. Um, and then uh, I I blacked out. And uh, when I came to, uh, my trousers were gone. (laughs) Oh, my God. What I think happened, (laughs) you saw a fucking drone and you were drunk and someone took your pants when you passed out drunk. That's the end of that story. (laughs) But that's it. That's all that one. Yeah, you saw a fucking drone. You saw a fucking drone. (laughs) What's a drone? All right, Sonny. You'll never understand. Well, folks, here we are. (laughs) 
on Tommy Dykes Road, nearing the end of our terrifying ghost tour. We have acquired along the way spirits, an alien from another world. Beep boop. <laughs> and now we are headed to the final stop on our tour. Mm. And we, yes, that's right. And it is Scotland's most iconic and legendary tourist attraction, Edinburgh's Castle, the beautiful Edinburgh Castle. That's our next destination. You might as well get back on the high street and take the Royal Mile straight up to the castle. It's about a half mile and it's a lovely walk. You'll pass all sorts of places. And uh, Edinburgh Castle sits atop an extinct volcano high above the city and it has done so since the 12th century. It is said to be the most besieged castle in all of Great Britain and the country's most visited tourist attraction. So much history, so much blood shed across the centuries and without a doubt one of scotland's most haunted places you spirits and alien are you ready to join me <laughs> as we i'm visit? very frightened but i'm very excited the spirit of edinburgh castle hello spirit who are you i would walk 500 miles and i oh hark stand and unfold yourself who goes there? It is I, Cameron McGonagall, and this is terrifying Edinburgh, a ghost tour of Edinburgh. We've come to the castle. I had no idea you were on your way. I'm wee Bruce. Wee Bruce? Wee Bruce. No, me Bruce, you Cameron. <laughs> we're not Bruce, you're Bruce, you're wee Bruce. I am the ghost wee of Bruce, Edinburgh Castle. Teenaged guard of the ramparts. <gasps> Standing guard. And the ramparts at the castle? And the last line of defence. Oh my. What if someone comes? I'll be brave and strong. My name is Wee Bruce. My spear is made of spruce. <laughs> my nerves are of steel. And ask anyone I'm the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful poem that is you've that got there. Beautiful. That's a nice poem, isn't in it? The, oh, in the beautiful. long lineage of a Robert Burns who wrote... Old Lang Syne. Oh, Bobby Burns, yes. A national a poet of Scotland. Of poet. Do you, are you related to Bobby no, Burns? No, but I knew him. Uh, did you know him? Aye. What, what was he like then? Like, like a man, like a fleshy man. Right. Eat like the rest of us. Sure, sure. <laughs> Sounds delicious. <laughs> Who are you all? This and is Sonny Bean, the cannibal of the coastline. How do you do? How do you do? And the phantom of the toll booth. <laughs> Well, not really. Well, we've got to get it going. The Phantom of the Toll Booth. Aye. And we've got here the Thirsty Ghost, the wee lass of the Hotel de Vin. That's me, lass. Can I offer you a flagon of water? Oh, gosh, I wish it was. Here you go. Well, wait a minute now. That raises a question. Aye. Can a ghost give another ghost a drink of water? Is it a ghost water? It is. It's a vapour. It'll go right through me. That's a sad part, but I never lose hope. But I'll taste it. Ye all will remain my friends as long as you don't try to pass, but if you do try to pass, you must answer me riddles three. Oh, is that <laughs> how it works? We've <laughs> also got Amanda from I'm the Amanda, Brew Lab. I died at Brew Lab. Oh, hello. <laughs> hey. The, you've got a way about you. I'm way too old for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I've seen some shit. I'm 15, almost 16. I'm 19, and I've had a lot of sexteen, too. <laughs> <laughs> I could, like her. Could you try, Amanda, when you introduce yourself to make it sound more spooky? Like, because you just said, I died the brew lab. Just Amanda, the spirit of the brew lab. Oh, oh yeah, I'm Amanda, the spirit of the brew lab. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> That's yeah. right, she's dead. Oh, I thought you were just a tourist. No, she died. She died a little while ago. <laughs> She's fresh. Recently did. Oh, yeah. that's why your brain's hanging out your eye socket like a noodle. Yeah, that's what it, a brain actually looks like. You just don't know because it's in your head. You're so cool. Thanks. <laughs> and we've also got an alien. Have you got a name, alien? Uh, yes, uh, Plexicon. <laughs> Greetings, larval earthling. Hello, pleased to make your acquaintance. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I hear I see we have been taken to your leader. This must be the seat of your Earth government. That's right. As far as you know, back in the 12th century, that this is where it all happened. And then a volcano erupted and made a lava, a lava man. So, uh, yes, the volcano was our idea. We uh, used our uh, 
futuristic instruments to uh, activate the volcano. Oh, that's, that's right, but that's, that's not how I died. Ridiculous, that's ridiculous. Oh God, Why is it ridiculous? Yeah. What planet are you from, by the way, Plaxicon? <laughs> Zoltan 3. <laughs> I've heard of it. Unbelievable. You, you've heard of it? Aye. I saw some flickering lights and stared at them for six minutes when I was on the ramparts. Interesting story. To some people might explain it away, but I wouldn't. <laughs> Were you able to keep your pants? N- nay, but I wear a kilt and I have nothing under there, like <gasps> they say. Nothing but the, the draft and God's breeze. Did you hear that, Amanda? Oh my God. Like, you don't even wear underwear? No, on windy days, it clacks around like a bell clapper. You're nuts? Yeah. <laughs> Me nuts. <laughs> I'm nude. <laughs> well, you're completely nude, Claxicon. I'm an alien. Plaxicon. Plaxicon. <laughs> well, Zoltan 3. Well, that doesn't your... explain why you're nude. I'm an alien. We I evolved. like that's an explanation. We have evolved past the need for clothing. <laughs> Wait, Bruce, when did you live? I lived in 1392. 1392? Hi. And you were guarding the castle at that time? That's right. I was the last line of defence up on the ramparts. Why did they put a 15-year-old boy up there? Well, most people were dying at 19 around those times. That's why don't be so sassy, because you could be dead soon. I am dead. That's right, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and we, Bruce, what killed you up there on the ramparts? Well, gather round, it's a tale to tell. I fell off the castle ramparts for fear they were going to flood with lava. That- so you fell off intentionally? right. You what choice were... did I have, burn or fall? <laughs> but the irony is I was struck by lightning on the way down. Oh. But that's nae what killed me. Before I hit the ground, I died of a broken heart. Oh, oh my God. Now we're Who talking. did it? We'll kill her. Thank you. It was wee Bonnie Bonnie, who was my true love, and oh. I had put a bairn in her tummy. But then we bairn in Angus Argyle comes along and says... I'm the feather of that baby, and I say, nay, you're nay the feather. And an old witch said, it could nay be him because his tadpoles are shriveled and winkly and die on the sea rocks where mine find purchase in her fertile soil, I think. I was just wondering, um, like, was it weird that she's a teen mom, or is that normal then? That, that's late, to be honest. Because oh most people are dying at your age, grey, haggard, leathery at okay. that point. You the average great. lifespan. <laughs> <laughs> the average lifespan in that time was about nineteen. Nineteen, if you're lucky. <laughs> the average age of the Scottish soldier was n- 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 nineteen. <laughs> oh, that I've heard that before. That's right. I've heard that. It's, yeah. It's last from Hotel Duan. I just wondered, did her water break? I <laughs> like. But you're fo- like you're laser focused on water. At this it point. broke like <laughs> like the floods of of Aberdeen. So you died of a broken heart because Aye. right you believed that the child was not was not yours, but was Angus. Is I, that why I knew it was my? You child. knew it was your it was child. My bairn. Aye. Not you Argyle's. didn't want to have a child. It broke your heart. No, I did want to have a child. He was saying it was his bairn, but it was my bairn, and she went with him, ah. and I was broken hearted. Bruce, me, Bruce. To yes. know you with were Plexicon. not gonna make it. What? It broke your heart on the way down to know that you were going to die and right. never meet your bairn. That's right. Yeah. But listen. Well, that answers my question then. Do you want to get through to the gift shop? You have to answer my riddles three. And <laughs> That's if right. You do this not, is the manner of your haunting, oh, isn't it? Yes. Gift shop. If you can eh, answer my riddles three, I take a year of your life. <laughs> As I was going to St. Eves, I met a man with seven waves. Each wave had seven cat sacks. Every... <laughs> what happened? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so there's a man, right? Right. And he's got seven ladies. Pretty good gig if you can get it. And that's just me that's editorializing. Not that's not wives. part of it. And every woman has a sack full of cats and every cat has a kitten. How many were going to St. Ives? Um. Wait, are they, uh, are they, the kittens, are they born or are they still in utero? They are born, but just recently. So these, these women are, are they're holding a bag with uh, two cats in it each. No, every wife has s- seven sacks. Every sack has seven cats. Every cat has seven kids. Oh, I, uh, oh not so, 21. But they're holding these cats in a bag. It's, it's gotten worse rather I, than better. It's yeah. four. 
The answer is four. Yes. You're saying it with such certainty. How'd you get to that? I counted the wives, I counted the cats, I counted the sex, then I counted backwards from eight, and I got four. He's not wrong. First answer, correct. Most people die on any journey. The cats in the bags, the wives of cholera and the like, scurvy, rackets, all of that. Even some of the one men died. So, <laughs> so four is absolutely correct. Oh. Four is the right answer. No I'm lives surprised. taken. No. Is, it, is it three riddles total? Three, and then the whole group gets to go. Aye. All right. Riddle number two. <laughs> Thank you, Plexicon, <laughs> for clearing that up. <laughs> Foolish apes! You'd never have <laughs> known to ask that question. Gather round, for I have a riddle to ask. We're, we're, we've well, never dispersed like all gathering. No one's gone anywhere. At no so time has fun. the crowd dispersed. <laughs> it's cold up here. The winds off the heath have rolled in. That's not the riddle. Okay. <laughs> what has four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs at night? A horny guy. Correct. <laughs> That's absolutely Wait right. Wait a minute, how's that the answer? I was not even starting to think about it. She's and absolutely so like, right. Okay, so guys wake up and they're so hungover they have to crawl to the bathroom. True. Right. And by the middle of the day, they're walking around at night, their dick's a third leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Their, their tabor is I'm ready surprised to toss. by the answers to both of these riddles so far. <laughs> There's really no other surprised. answer. But I'm delighted that we're doing this well. Yeah. It's 1482. <laughs> a Boeing 747 has crashed on the border of Alabama and Louisiana. Where do you bury the survivors? It's a trick. Uh, it's not a trick, it's a riddle. It's a trick riddle. Plaxicon, do you know this riddle? Yes. Aye. There are no survivors. No, hold on. Aye. No, they no. They were taken up in a no, spacecraft. That, no, I, I phrased it wrong. Let me rephrase it. <laughs> the plane crashes on the border of Alabama and Louisiana. Where do you bury the people that didn't die? The people that didn't die, where do you bury them? <laughs> they're not dead, though. Well, of course they're dead. Why would this be a riddle if they weren't dead? Well, you said, didn't they die? You that said, they didn't they die? die? What well, did I you didn't mean by didn't they die? I, did they survive? I think the answer is either it's his mother Aye. or it's Go no further. Kill. That's correct. Was the pilot a man or a woman? <laughs> he, he was on a block of ice before he hanged himself. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I feel like Louisiana. Correct. <laughs> You're all correct, because I'll tell you why. In the state of Louisiana, there's a maternity clause that says if, you're, if your wee bear dies, your mother gets to bury them. And what was your answer? The man uh, with the pilot was on a the space. They were, uh, they were uh, uh, abducted by a spacecraft. Correct. That's also correct. This is a user-friendly ghost tour, and we really want you to spend great... Nobody's ever gotten a riddle wrong. Or right, you're the first ones through either way. <laughs> you've never barred entry to anybody through the castle gates. That's right. In all the time you've been haunting here. Absolutely. But I do want to say, Aye. it's been really wonderful having you all here. <laughs> Aye. Does I'll... anyone else want to throw them off the ramparts? I beg your pardon. You couldn't if you tried. <laughs> Quick, tell him some bad news. <laughs> well, honestly, I couldn't get into heaven because no one's ever died of a broken heart and a lightning and a fall. So, so it, just administratively, there's it, no. It's could, never been done. There's no precedent. Let you in there. And I, I see. They need paperwork or something. Right. If any of you has a broken heart, we could throw you off. Or you know, there's water skies. Maybe it's raining. Maybe we could get the job done. <gasps> Rain. I, I just that. got broken up with. Great. Are you sad? Are you? I mean, it was the right thing, you know. It was. Uh, we oh, were. Ver- I'm sorry, I. All right, Plaxicon. <laughs> let's not get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's about time to take a wee break, and we'll come back in a moment. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna make it later. What? What's that? What's that then? Come I just on. like I have a thing, so I have to get back to Brew Lab. Jeremy said he was gonna like make me a drink. So I didn't want to be like missing that. All right, you got to get back there. Uh, yeah, I just feel like they, I can like reconcile with him if I 
in there, but if I don't show, then like it's not going to be good. You're still trying to get back together with Jeremy? I just like feel like he was like the last guy who loved me and like I, I don't really look as good what right now. So. Brain, brain. <laughs> Well, that's a sad story, isn't yeah. it? You look great. So oh, you're kind of saying, like, but... you've got a better chance of getting back with your ex than with finding someone yeah, new. Yeah. What was your brain hanging brain out your eye? eye? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that there concludes the terrifying Edinburgh tour. Now, when we come back from a quick break, we've got to do a little bit of business. The Scottish Board of Tourism, as you know, doesn't just want to drive tourism to Edinburgh. They also want people to visit the Heelands. And so I've got, we've got a bit of a plan Anyway, it'll all make sense after the break, but stay around because we're going to talk about something. One of the first things anybody thinks about when they think about Scotland is what we're going to talk about after the break. I'm talking about the Loch Ness Monster. (laughs) We'll be back right after the break. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I'd just like to say... (laughs) Yes, what is it? I I think it's unfair that she was allowed to leave because... uh, that was never given as part of the thing if you had other things to do with your day. and uh, Have you got other things to do with your day? There's other things I could have done, and now you're my ride, so I'm stuck here. That's right, and we're going to have an argument on the way home because I've got nothing but complaints. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Cameron McGonagall's Terrifying Edinburgh. My God, we've seen some terrifying things on this podcast, haven't we? We've, we've met some terrifying ghosts and we've been all through Edinburgh. And now, as I mentioned before the break, we've got to do a bit of a, um, uh, sort of a bit of a, a house cleaning business because, as you know, this podcast is sponsored by and paid for, quite frankly, by the Scottish Board of Tourism. And they don't just want people to come to Edinburgh. They want people to go a bit north into the Highlands. And the greatest attraction up north by far is also terrifying. The Loch Ness Monster. Oh, no. Ah, no ah. Monster. Anything but that. Who has plagued the Loch Ness for a long time. And so what we've got here, and this is exciting, we've got a guest to talk about the monster who has seen the monster. And her name is Mary Dukas from Frenick Farms. Hello, Hello. Mary Dukas. Hello, Mary. Love work at Frenick Farm. Frenick Farm, and where is that? It's off the coast of Lakshon. All right, and what, yeah. what goes on at Frenick Farm? Well, I'm a cook. What, I beg your pardon? I'm a cook at Frenick Farm. They've got you can say that again. <laughs> oh, you're the cook. You cook the food. I cook the food oh, at sorry. Frenick Farm. <laughs> I thought it sounded like you were sorry. confessing to being a bit of a cook, but, you're, but you're a cook. I'm not you're a cook, cook not I'm a cook. cook. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and so you cook the food there at yeah, Frenick, Frenick Farm. Farm, if you know what it is. It's a, a bunch of luxurious cottages that people summer in and stay in in the winter months. <laughs> That's right, summertime cottages and wintertime cottages. That you've got lovely. You've got both. <laughs> That's right. You can stay there year-round. Can you go? You can go in the spring and the yes, fall as well. You, you can. can go in the spring and the fall. If you look it up on Google Maps, it's just green. <laughs> but you would not have to have looked it up on Google Maps because you live there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't I look it up on Google Maps. No, I live there. I've lived there for 25 years. Have you now? And you've been yes. the cook there this whole time. I've been time. a cook there this whole time. So you've had multiple experiences of the Loch Ness yes, Monster. You multiple have. experiences. Because a lot of people say um, it can't possibly exist, right? <gasps> so no. Lo- oh. It exists. It, it exists. <laughs> All right. It's real. All right. How many experiences have you had with the monster? Oh, I see. I see Nessie. Nessie. I see Nessie every five yards. Roughly every, f- <laughs> but every five yards. You see five, five yards. yards. Five years. Like it's five sets of three feet. Yeah. No, it's, it's a very said, long no. creature. Five oh. years every oh, five years. years. Oh, five years. Yeah. oh right. What are the yeah. circumstances? Do you travel up there to Loch Ness? Yeah. I make, well. When I was five years old, Aye. my family took me to Loch Ness Aye. and I stood there on the shore Aye. and I looked out at the water. Aye. The beautiful water. Of so far, sure, I'm completely with you. And sure enough, I'm the only one on the beach because my, my parents had gone and fucked off. Uh, so I was there. Was expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> I was there by myself. Oh. And Nessie, Nessie popped his head up and he looked me in the eye. He did? 
he did. He said, Mary. <gasps> he spoke to you? Yeah. And, and he to you. knew my name. And he knew your name. He knew my name. And he said, Mary Dukas, come closer. <gasps> and so I got closer. <laughs> <laughs> You did as he said. Of course, you obeyed the you monster. Followed the monster. Yes, of course. Gather and round, did. he has a tale to tell. And you never <laughs> married. And I never married. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, what? That stands beside the point that she never married. And she was married. She was, she was Mary Duke's son, and she's married. Oh, I see what you're now. saying. Oh, You've noted oh, that her name right. hasn't changed. And when you have luck, you don't go Mary back. Mary Estate. Deductive reasoning. And Aye. so. I waded out into the shallow waters. I did. Oh, she could have kept her maiden name. <laughs> but anyway. But the but point listen, is. We're right in the middle of a suspenseful part of the story. And Nessie, Nessie leaned down to me with his great neck. Right. And he, he arched over and he leaned down and he looked me in the eye. Aye. And then he cast me on the track. He did what? <laughs> he cashed your he check. He cast my check. Because cast you didn't check. want to do cash. Because you what? just got enough for your shift. No, there I, are supposed to be safeguards I, against I, just heel, such an occasion. It's a healing accent that no one understands. Right, the healing accent is different. That's what it is, isn't it? He kissed her on the neck. Aye, he gave you a wee kiss on the no, cheek. No, no. Unless he's a man. He on the chat. Unless he is a male creature. On the I, I suppose. No yes. kidding. And I said, oh, Nessie, I never thought you'd be so gentle. Aye. And he said, he didn't say anything. I see. <laughs> and he he winked at me, no. and he went back down under the water. Oh! <laughs> and that was it then. Well, that was my first encounter. All right, because all right. Because of course, I grew up. You can't stop it. That's right. People just grow <laughs> up. She's true. right about that. That's, That's true. It's a natural process. That's right. how we know right. the story's sure. true. Because that yeah, part was That's right. Creatures. She would have lied about yeah. that the if it wasn't. It. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Primitive creature old. still uh, giving live birth and growing. <laughs> yeah. That's right, Plexicon. You've gone past that. <laughs> <laughs> we have indeed. All right. So there I am. I'm 10 years old. No. Five years have gone by. Five years. And you're back by. at Loch Ness. And I'm back at Loch Ness. No. And sure enough, my parents had gone and fucked off. <laughs> Somewhere. Again, they just again. keep fucking off, don't That's they? That's right. Yeah. I'm leaving you on the yeah, banks of the loch. Yeah, don't they? It must have been nice to have parents, no? So there I am on the shores of Loch Ness. Aye. Much as I was when I was five years old. Aye. Sure enough, Nessie. Pokes his great neck up out of the water. No. His neck. <laughs> not his head. His head was no, uh, still submerged. No, not his head. His, his head was still submerged. But I saw his neck and I thought, oh, that's Nessie. And so I waded out into the shallow part of the water. <laughs> Nessie lifted his great head up. No. And he looked at me. No. And I said, Nessie, I never forgot that kiss. And I brought out the, the hard-boiled egg. Oh, I thought it was the chick. Oh. You had a hard-boiled egg? Yeah, I always bring one with me when we go to the lock. It sort of came out of nowhere. <laughs> well, I, it's anywhere. nice to have a wee snack, I suppose. Right. And, and so then, you had a, an egg. It's familiar. And then Nessie, familiar. And then Nessie, looked, Nessie looked at him, look, he was confused. And I said, you ate it, Nessie. And then, and then I said, I said, I love you, Nessie. <laughs> He looked at me and he's like, I, he didn't understand. And so I said, I love you, Nessie. And then I realized right. I've got to teach him sign language. No. i got to teach him sign language. With his flippers, he don't even have digits. I'm in love with him. I can't help it. And so I, I started teaching him how to sign. And he could do it. He could do it. He mostly did that. He could do. He could do it. So he did he'd it. have to uh, sort of rear up and uh, get his whole body out of the. Well, he would roll back so his neck and head were back in the water, but his fins were right. above the water, I and see. he would sign, sign with his fins, and then he'd roll back over, and I would. Respond, and this went on like this. That sounds like an arduous process. <laughs> it was. Well, nobody was nobody be easy. else noticed. 
That's right. Nobody yeah. saw this go happen. No, there was <laughs> you didn't. Loch Ness was very, very. It was a quiet you time. You didn't want to start the with a slap the water once for yes, twice for no. No, I just I went straight to Sh- teaching him more. That's even impressive. Basic, uh, nodding or shaking your head. No, Nessie didn't get well, that. Can he bark? <laughs> what? No. Can he bark? Oh, hold on. <laughs> like when you dog. first encountered him, <laughs> he spoke your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, that yeah. was different. Yeah, that was different because that's a name. That's a name. That's so he could different. Do, he could do names. He could. Yeah, he knows names. He's a magical creature. But so let's cool. just be clear to those who don't think the Loch Ness monster exists. Just uh, b- because it sounds like we've got a lot of evidence about you know, he can speak names. Yes. But only names. I Full wait stop. a minute. Full stop. That's it. Every name or just like names on a license plate in a gift shop? <laughs> You're saying if you've got a real weird name, yeah, like, can he well, pronounce your name is Tavis or something? Like if your name is Penelope, would he just say Penny? <laughs> I don't know. Like could he do Matthew and Matt? Yeah. All right, keep I... going. And he's got such a long neck that he can take his neck out of the water but not his head. Uh, that's All right, right. and that's then right. and he can learn sign language with his flippers. Aye, and right. you say he lives in Loch Ness. Well, that part everyone agrees upon. That's what not, are the odds of that? No, that's not new information. Well, that's just crazy. crazy. Keep well, up. Yeah, we all know that. That's know. the least fascinating part of the story. Well, so you at, don't know, yeah. right? Is that there are underground? There are a thing like you tunnels. Know, Tunnels that are underground, ways. underwater tunnels off. that Loch Ness, that Nessie, can swim through and he can pop his neck and his head up in any loch in Scotland. No. I've heard that theory of the Loch Ness Monster and why you right. sometimes can't find him before because he disappears That's through right. tunnels. That's right. It's a, That's right. a great, very probable theory. What a terrible can, thing can to I... be looking for him at Loch Ness and then he's at another loch. Summering um, at another lock. It's a shame. Has he ever appeared in your lock? Lock Aye. Sean. Lock Sean. He's come down there. Yes, he has appeared in Lock Sean. <gasps> because he is the truth. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nessie. Nessie and I. Mary Dukas. Nessie and I are in love. No. Oh. You're in love with a monster. I'm in love with Nessie. He's the most gentle creature I've ever met on this earth. Are you worried that uh, people will not uh, allow you to love this creature? I know people will not allow me to love him. And that's why I insisted that the Scottish Board of Tourism let me come on and talk about him. So this is it. You've been carrying on this affair with the Loch Ness Monster in secret for all this time. I... And now... On this podcast, <gasps> you've chosen to come out and tell the world that you're in love with a Loch Ness monster. If you want to meet Nessie, I do, I do, I do. I can arrange I for it. Oh, you can. But you see, tonight at midnight, <gasps> I'm going down to Loch Sean and I'm meeting Nessie, and there, where he's gonna take me down, and we're gonna have. Sex underwater. Seems oh, like a strange time to meet someone. <laughs> and you want us to come watch that? I don't want you to watch me have, m- make love with Nessie, but I do want you to meet him. I'm, but glad, this is... I'm glad you said make love. That is nice. That was beautiful. But look, this, is, oh, is, it, <laughs> this would be a bit of an awkward meeting, wouldn't it? Be, being that we know, it'd be a real quick hello, how do you do, and then get out of there because these two are going to make love. It's a bit awkward. You have to concede. <laughs> right. I'm embarrassed to meet him knowing that that's what's going to happen. Right. Isn't it? How do I look at the guy? <laughs> have you told him that we'll know? Are you going to uh, spring it on him? I haven't talked to him in a long time. I haven't talked to him in the last five years. Oh, it's been a long time. Oh, it's been five years now. Five yards I'm already. 65. <laughs> All right. Have you got a hard boiled egg in your pocket? Always. <laughs> Uh, Mary, have you ever been um, evaluated by, like, a psychiatrist or something? I said, I want to have girls, but no. Squad girls? 
Are you saying yeah. you want to have gills so you gals. can breathe oh, underwater? Gills. That's gills. what I'm saying. Gills. Well, that is a sort of an answer to my question about a psychiatrist. I'm taking the answer is no. You never met a psychiatrist I didn't like. I, oh, I see. <laughs> have oh, you ever right. met a psychiatrist? Have you ever no. met one? Oh, there you go. There you That's go. one of my riddles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I hope that the Scottish Board of Tourism is satisfied that we have met uh, someone who can drive tourism up north Will to try... Will you come at midnight? Well, I, I mean, I suppose so. I would not miss it. I guess we're going to come <laughs> over there to Loch Sean at midnight and we're going to have a look at Great. Mary Mary Dukas from Frenick Farms, the cook, and her lover, the Loch Ness Monster, and we'll, we'll say a quick hello before you go onto the water. And fuck. And fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what we're going to do. What you're going to do at home is up to you. You've made it to Edinburgh. You've gone on a wonderful ghost tour. You've now an met... An alien. What's that? That's an alien. You've met an alien. <laughs> and you've met uh, the woman who is uh, the Loch Ness Monster's... Hello! Girlfriend. Oh, we're not starting again. Hello, no, we're I'm not Mary starting. No. And I'm a cook at Frenick Farm. That's right. No, we know that already. We're just signing off and saying goodbye. <laughs> this has been Cameron McGonagall's terrifying Edinburgh ghost tour. It was all very frightening. It was frightening, wasn't <laughs> Absolutely. it? Absolutely. It puts a chill up I'm your spine, I'm shaking in it? my boots. Right, we're terrifying. ghosts and we've got frightened. Yep. See that? You've frightened some ghosts, haven't you? I've got ghost chills. Well, now... Now, uh, enjoy the rest of your stay in Edinburgh. And if looking for a place to stay in the area of Loch Shawn, I suppose you could check out Frenic Farms. Frenic Farms! But I wouldn't eat the food! <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Goodbye! That was scary. It was scary. Wow. It was uh, scary on, on several different levels. There was a lot there to be concerned about. Yeah. Uh, things got a little weird there, I think, in the end. A little weird, you know? I think I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad they put in, that mm -hmm. we put in the disclaimer about the accents, because I wouldn't have believed those were real accents had I not have known that 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 was actually just the diversity of accents that exist in that country. Yeah, that's how it is. That's and it's a fascinating accent, too, in that, like, for a sentence or two at a time, it'll sound like something else. Well, I think that's because when the person was saying it, they were crossing the demarcations from one region into another and that, that affects makes it. It's like going through a magnetic field. I mean, if I have my science right. Right. That yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yes. Perfect sense. Uh, yeah. But I really enjoyed that. And I have been to Edinburgh. I've been to some of these places and it's very, listening to this, I was, I was back there again. I was transported yeah. back there again. It's very evocative. Uh, and uh, I think, I think it's going to do a hell of a lot for Scotland. Yeah, I think people are going to stream into that city. I agree to experience this podcast, and and if, as he says, he can keep this going forever, he can do episode after episode because there are so many haunted places in Edinburgh. You know, that's huge. That's right. This thing is is it's basically ready to go. It's evergreen. Uh, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, you wrap this up. I just saw that Scott Ackerman's heading to the restroom. I'm going to try to sort of trap him there okay. and really pitch him hard on this because I think this one needs to go. The bathroom is the perfect place to pitch him on this one. Uh, okay, great. So thank you so much for listening. A few people to thank for this one. Paul F. Tompkins, Sean Conroy, Lauren Lapkus, Mary Holland, uh, and Jessica Chaffin, and also Dave Wilder, who composed the theme song for this podcast. You can check him out at wilderstylemusic.com. Dot com. What a glorious podcast uh, this was. And next week, uh, our next episode is called, uh, what is it called? The Variety Hour with Gill and Golly? The, 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 oh, the Gill and Golly Gil and Variety. Go I'm back from that. Oh, hi. He, How did it go with Scott? It didn't go well. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but I'll talk more about it <laughs> yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Gill and Golly Variety. The Gill and Golly Variety yeah. Hour. And uh, I think you're really going to enjoy that just as much as this one, if not more. Alrighty. Bye. This holiday season, Earwolf wants to spread some cheer. Cheerwolf, if you will. We've got special episodes all over the network. 
just for you. Andrew T. and Tawny Newsom talk to Kulop Vile, I can't pronounce this, about holiday racism on Yo! Is This Racist? That sounds fun. Unspooled takes a deep dive into AFI's favorite Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Off Book has not one, not two, not four, but three holiday-themed musicals for you to indulge in? Surprise! All the special holiday episodes of With Special Guests are out from behind the paywall as a gift to you. You can also check out a very special Improv for Humans episode, Best of the Bible. On Are You Talking R.E.M. Remi, the Scots talk about every R.E.M. holiday single released and nothing else. Sean and Hayes hit the slopes with Adam Pally on a very festive episode of Hollywood Handbook. Beautiful Anonymous, Chris Gethard is taking calls for New Year's resolutions. Tune in on Earwolf's Facebook page December 21st at 2 p.m. Eastern. Marissa and Listler get a special listener call in with a heartfelt proposal on Womp It Up. Followed by the Christmas Womptacular released from behind the paywall and if that's not enough check out even more special holiday apps from how did this get made getting curious who charted freedom of course comedy bang bang happy holidays happy listening and a merry cheer wolf to all so much stuff so much cheer cheer wolf <laughs>